So dear parents and students, welcome back to another video in Test Drive Card channel. I believe all of you are doing great and staying safe. So what we are going to present in today's video. Today we are going to discuss about one of the top NIT in India that is located in the state of Maharashtra, particularly in Nagpur, that's Visveswaraya National Institute of Technology, popularly known as VNIT. So we are going to discuss about this college in detail in this video. Let me just tell you what are the things that I'm going to cover in this video first. We'll briefly discuss about the VNIT. I mean about this college first, then we'll move on to the courses which VNIT offers. Then we'll discuss about the eligibility criteria for the Indian and NRI students. Then we'll discuss about the reservation of Indian and NRI students, if any. Is there any entrance exam that is required to get into this college? We will also cover that aspect. And if yes, then what is the required cutoff for the Indian and NRI students? We'll also discuss what is the application process for this college. Is there any scholarship opportunities that you have? We'll also discuss and still you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section below. So this is just the brief about the next 10 minutes that you will spend with me. Okay. Fine. So let's start this video. <clears throat> All right. Again, a small request. If you haven't subscribed our YouTube channel, that's Tristrep Card, then please subscribe and also press the bell icon so that you won't miss any videos from us. All right. Let's start this video now. Let's discuss about VNIT. What is this VNIT? So VNIT was established in the year 2008. This is one of the top NIT amongst 31 NITs in India. It is an autonomous institute recognized by UGC and AICTE. A lavish campus of 215 acres. Yes, that's a lavish campus, right? You can visit the site www.vnit.ac.in for more updates about this college. Normally all the colleges offers three types of courses, right? As we know, bachelors, masters and doctoral so this this vnit also offers three categories of uh, courses this is btech mtech msc and phd uh, every year the students the total number of students enrolled in this college is 3716 that's a great number okay and the entrance exam that is being accepted in this college is jee okay that's je advance gate and jam it's a co-ed college and the mode of application is online. So this is about just the brief of this VNIT. Let's move on and discuss about the major courses that this college offer with the specializations. So if particularly talking about BTEC, then this college offers specialization in computer science and engineering, in electrical and electronics engineering, in electronics and communication and engineering, in mechanical engineering, in chemical engineering, in civil engineering, in metallurgical and material engineering, and in mining engineering. So these are the domains in which one can do their BTEC. Now they offer normal BARC, that's a general BARC, but once you are doing MARC from this college, then in that case, you will be having specialization. We'll cover that part too, don't worry. Now, if I talk about MTEC, then the major specializations are CAD CAM. Now these days, these are very famous, CAD and CAM chemical, then communication system, then computer science, then construction technology, environmental technology, you know, environmental technologies again of huge demand these days because of the sustainability and CSR activities that every company is abiding. All right. They are following this. So this is of great demand. You can, if you're wishing to, you know, do your M tech in electronic or sorry, in electrical, in environmental engineering specifically, then you can target this too. Then this is geotechnical engineering, then heat power engineering, then industrial, then integrated power system material, then power electronics and driver structure, then transportation, then structural dynamics, then structural, then urban planning, then material engineering, then process metallurgy, then water resource engineering and VLSI. Again, VLSI is in huge demand these days. So these are the major domains in which you can do your M tech. Okay. Let's move on and discuss about few other courses like MSc. In MSc, there are specializations like, of course, this will be general physics, chemistry, mathematics. If I talk about PhD, then yes, they do offer in a specialization in the field of applied science, engineering and humanities and social science. So this is just a brief about the courses. All right. Now let's discuss about the eligibility criteria for the Indian and NRI students. So this is again a general eligibility criteria because this is one of the NIT. It says that the candidate must have passed their class 12, essentially 10 plus 12th, with minimum of 60% marks in maths, physics, and chemistry. Now that is a minimum of 60% marks. Okay. Now this is just a brief and the major eligibility criteria for the Indian and NRIs. Once you qualify, then only you are eligible for other eligibility criteria. 
it would be great if I discuss about the courses wise, all right, then you will have a fair idea. So if I discuss about the eligibility criteria in course wise, it says that for the BTEC, this is you need to having minimum of 75% marks. That was the general. Now specifically, if you talk about BTEC, this is minimum of 75% marks plus J mains. If I talk about the fees, this is 1 lakh 49,000. Let's take it 1 lakh 50,000 for the first year, which means that this will cost you somewhere around 6 lakhs rupees if you do your BTEC from this college. If I talk about MTech, this is uh, the minimum eligibility criteria. Is, of course, you need to pass your graduation with minimum of 60% marks. Uh, you need to having a very safe side, right? If you think about 55 or 50%, then of course, you fall in certain category, then only you think about that. Let's be on a safe side, score at least 60% marks, you are sorted. And then you need to clear gate with a required cutoff, then you are eligible for MTech. If I talk about BR, then this is 10 plus two, that is your class 12 with 50% marks. And you need to qualify NETA. That is a national test. Uh, that's national architectural test. You need to qualify with certain cutoffs are there. And the fees is one like 52,000 for the first year. For the PhD, you need to having post graduation with minimum 60% marks. And of course, there are certain criteria like you, if you are qualified, net qualified or uh, UGC, CSIR qualified, right? Then, then you will be exempted from few steps like proposal or submitting of research work or passing on through GDPI process, you'll be exempted. And the fees is 34,800 rupees for the first year. If I talk about MSc, then you need to qualify G means with 55% marks in your graduation and the fees is around 60,000 rupees for the first year. That's a government college, right? It's a government college, so the fees is really low, as you can see in here. Now let's move on. Before I move on, let's discuss about the very important aspect, which is for the NRI students. So for the NRI students, we have prepared an NRI ebook that is related to DASA and CIWG. You can download it from the link in the description below. We have a compiled set of NRI books and this is basically for the NRI students. This will really help them for their preparation. All right, now let's move on and discuss about the reservation of students. Now, let me start with reservation of NRI's PIOs CIWGC under DESA. So in all the NITs, there are a total of 233 seats reserved for NRIs and CIWGC candidates, out of which 156 seats are reserved for NRIs under NRI quota, and the remaining, which is 77, reserved for CIWGC category under DESA. Again, they put a filter that your date of birth should be after 1st April, 1st October 1994. 1st October 1994 is acting as a filter, right? That is acting as a filter. Post that you will be eligible for applying in this NITs. Now this applies to not particularly this college. This is for the general NITs. Okay. At this point of time. All right. Let me just discuss about the reservation of students. Now this is for the Indian students. So this is a government college. So definitely it will fall, follow all the government rules and regulations. So as for the rules and regulations, it says that 7.5% of the total seats should be reserved for ST category students. 15% of the total seats should be reserved for SC category students. 27% of the total seats should be reserved for OBC category students. 10% for the EWS. So this sums up to 59.50% seats reserved for the reservation category students, which means that there are 31.5% of the seat that is for the general category students. All right. Let's briefly discuss about the entrance exam. Then what are the major entrance exam that you need to clear to get into this college? So for the BTEC and BRC, you should be having a valid JE main score and JE advanced score. If I talk about MTEC, then you should be having a valid gate score with then after that, you need to be passing on through the process. That's VAT, written ability test or GD and PI. Okay. If I talk about MS by research, then you should be having a valid gate score. Post that again, you will be passing on through the process like VAT and GDPI. If I particularly talk about MPhil and PhD, it says that you should be, I mean, passing gate or UGC net or CSIR net or ICAR or ICMR or written aptitude test interview conducted by this university. Now, of course, they're conducting this exams and these are conducted by various departments like Department of Mathematics, Department of Physics, Department of Chemistry. Under that, again, there are various domains in which you have measured your masters. All right. So you can visit the site for more details about this part. Let's move on and discuss about the required cutoff. So, of course, the cutoff is decreasing because of various factors, maybe because of opening of new IITs, because these days various IITs are opened, right? 
This is one such factor. The second factor can be the level of difficulty that keeps on increasing. So that's why the cutoff is decreasing and they are calling more number of students. I'll show you the data right here. This is the data we have compiled the data of the last three years that is 2018, 2019 and 2020. Let me just tell, just take a very random domain that let's take civil engineering. So if you see the data, this says that 17,284 students have been called in this year 2018. That increased to 23,282. So if we just take a rough number of a figure here that sums to somewhere around 5,000 more students. They call more 5,000 more students if they compared, if you just compare with the respective year that is 2018 and if you see the year 2020, they have called 27,159 students. Again, take a rough call. This is somewhere on more 4,000 students, right? 4,000 students more than the last year, which is 2018. So what do you think about this year? This is 2021. You're falling in. Are they going to call more 4,000 students or what? Write that thing in the comment section below. Now, there are various factors. I just told maybe because of demographics or maybe because of student intending to change their uh, domains. There are many aspects here, right? We cannot say in general. Also, for the NRI students, uh, if you just want to see your cutoff, that what is the cutoff, you can visit the site www.siksha.com slash college slash VNIT, that's with space for IA, National Institute of Technology, then dash Nagpur and the pin, which is 24399, okay? Now let's discuss about the application process. So the application process is not so hard and like if you're just thinking about that this is a very hard process, then this is not a very hard process, quite simple process. You have been through this because you are, if you are targeting masters, then you have been through this graduation activities. If you are in class 12, well, then in that case, you have to be very careful and read all the instructions. You need to visit the site, uh, check the eligibility criteria for your course, okay? And then fill the form, pay the application form, right? The amount. This normally ranges from 500 rupees to 1500 rupees and then you'll be called for the next process, next round, right? That depends. Okay, now let's discuss about the scholarship part. For the scholarship part, many students target this type of college only because of scholarship. To be frank, because in these types of colleges, all the fees, I mean, I have seen the data that all the fees are reimbursed, like the fees, let's say six lakhs rupees or three lakh rupees for the particular course. And if you are category students or if you are a very uh, meritorious students who are very good at studies, then all your money, all the amounts that you have invested in your studies in this college is going to be reimbursed, provided you have to study well. Let me just tell you a random scholarship. This is scholarship one. It says that various scholarship schemes are available for the BTEC students. Okay. National level scholarship. You are eligible for national level scholarship once you get into this college. Maharashtra state scholarship. Yes, this is a state scholarship. In every college, this is a criteria. Not particularly restricted to this college. This is in general college of India. That whichever state in this that college is located, then there are two categories. OSS, that's outside student and within the states. So within the states, I mean, those students who are actually uh, who's, who have the domicile of that particular state, then they are eligible for, I mean, they have a different set of scholarship and they will be given privilege because they are the domicile students. Okay. That does not create any partiality, any problem because there is one more portal that's called National Scholarship Portal that is open for all the students, right? Not for the state students or for the domicile students. This is for the general student of India. And even all the NRIs provided few conditions are uh, that there are few conditions that needs to be met. They are also eligible to apply. You can visit the site NSP. That's National Scholarship Portal. Okay. There are other scholarship options as well, like many organizations sponsors these types of colleges and they provide a scholarship in the form of fellowship or working in a life project, internship. So a great opportunity you will get. Once you get into this college, your life is all sorted because these all colleges are of national repute. There are a total of 31 NITs as of now. All right, there are details like you can visit the sites. Uh, this is given in this presentation. You can just go through this video description. So this is just a brief about this entire video, which is VNIT. I hope you enjoyed. Again, you have any questions, any doubt, ask in the comment section below. Feel free to ask because this is very high time. I know this is the time of admission. This is a time of very chaotic decisions that students fall into and they regret after three, four years. Okay. So take a proper counseling and whatever doubts you have, just write in the comment section below. We are more than happy to reach you. Okay. Fine. So let's, this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.